Hello everybody and welcome to a different kind of game. This game is kind of chill and relaxing and whatever and I would like to play this game on uh, Saturdays and Sundays to replace uh, Super Mario RPG and I think because I got a comment that said you know they wanted to see games that did not have uh, turn-based battle this is not a game that has turn-based battle. Hardcore is a mode that is only for the brave. Death is final until you retire or die. Cheat fate, see how much fame and experience you can collect, and post your score online and compete with your friends. We're not going to be doing that mode, we're just going to be doing an adventure. And also, you can check your select your difficulty pages like novice, adventure, is like normal. Hero is kind of like master, and then this is professional. For the sake of chill. We're just gonna do adventure. There's some customizations here. And something that's really unique about Fate is that you have a little pet companion. Let's name ourselves. Let's see. I'm gonna have a pet a cat or a dog. I'll probably be going with the cat. And his name will be Zen. Battle worn and weary, you emerge from the dungeon depths, triumphant. Your heroic courage has won freedom for the town of Grove, prying its people from the clutches of the dungeon's mangsome scourge. As you feast upon the generous bounty brought forth by the grateful townsfolk, the appearance of a mysterious stranger casts a shadow across the festivities. The stranger, a withered old man, hunched over his gnarled cane, speaks cryptically of new evil to befall Grove, of ancient secrets locked within a temple buried deep inside the dungeon's catacombs, of gateways to undiscovered realms. He weaves enchanting tales of the wealth and glory to be found in these mysterious realms. Druantia, the land of verdant forests. Typhon, with cities of ice long since fallen from the clouds. Aquatus, where murky waters entomb lost souls. And Prometheus, a world of cracked earth and flaming towers. Finally, he speaks of chaos, the realm of eternal turmoil. Of the temple's secrets, he divulges only the greatest. Hidden within is an ancient tome the Book of Fate, which maintains the balance between these realms. Within its pages lies the key to Grove's salvation. The townsfolk look to you, their new champion, to take up this perilous quest and guide the stranger through the dungeon in search of the ancient temple. You must protect the town from these foreboding prophecies. You must once again step boldly across the threshold of that ancient dungeon gate in search of your true fate. The stranger leads you into the bowels of the dungeon through endless passages and twisting corridors. He cowers in the shadows while you dispatch denizens of the dark, clearing the way for your urgent quest. At long last, the stranger calls for you to halt. Great foreboding fills your heart as he intones a guttural chant. Glowing light fills his eyes, while his body thrashes and gesticulates wildly in an eldritch trance. This is no mere old man. The chamber shudders, great cracks forming in the moldy dungeon walls. Amid a cloud of dust, rubble, and fetid fumes, turrets and statues of lost heroes thrust violently into the chamber, with a final heave, the chaos reveals the cyclopean gates of a hidden temple as described by the stranger. Behold, he mutters breathlessly, the temple of fate. The temple walls are lined with majestic statues of the fabled guardian gatekeepers of the realms. In the center of the room, an altar glows incandescently, bearing the mighty volume, the Book of Fate. Staring intently at each page, you search for the answers to Grove's deliverance. 
but the arcane text reveals something more ominous. This book holds powers beyond those the stranger's tales led you to believe. Locked within its covers lies the key to the undiscovered realms, protecting them from evil forces that would bring corruption and devastation. You realize now that by uncovering this temple, you have committed a grave error. At last, I will rule the realms. You hear the stranger cackle before blackness engulfs you, following a mighty, crackling, concussive blast. Treachery. You find yourself alone, lying prostrate on the cold temple floor. The fabled book is missing. All that remains are two whirling portals torn open by the stranger's fell magic. Gateways to realms unseen for countless eons are open in front of you. A lush green glow emits from one, no doubt leading to the long-lost forest realm of Druantia. Witheringly cold gales waft from the other. Surely this is the path to Typhon and its mysterious snowy ruins. The temple's guardian statues glare disdainfully down at you. What evil have you foolishly released upon these noble creatures' domain? You now know what must be done. Rise up as a hero and step forth into the undiscovered realms. Defeat the great evil you have unleashed and bring back the Book of Fate. Your journey has begun. Welcome to the Temple of Fate. Explore the temple by left clicking to walk. Talk to everyone. Search for quests to perform when you are ready. Enter a portal to begin your adventure. You help. Left click to move, attack, and interact with items. Right click to cast spells when learned. Control to run. Hold alt. Or hold control to run. Hold alt to highlight items while on the ground. Shift to remain stationary while attacking. Hold shift to... While clicking on items, have your pet take them. Hold shift while clicking merchants to sell directly from the pet's inventory. Tab also toggles auto map. Leave the save menu. Page toggles help menu. Escape to pause or leave the save menu. Pets help. Drop items here to feed the pet. You have a stamina bar. You can also toggle run and you can toggle show loot so it will always be active. I highly recommend doing that. Just do that. Don't mess with this holding thing because um you might be in the middle of battle and not paying attention to toggling these and you may end up not being able to run or not seeing what you were supposed to from the showing the loop button so just keep those active at all times sub menu buttons your health bar quick item slots so you can use any numbers for them mana bar gold here's bar and it's a zero now now, getting into stats, you have strength, affects damage dealt, which means if you increase this, your damage will be increased. This matters for weapons, in range of damage dealt on successful strikes. Your damage is varied between a low amount and a high amount, what you could max out and then there you have an average. Our average is probably about 4.5 or so. You have fame. We will get into that more later when we actually level that. Then we have our experience. Dexterity will affect the likelihood of striking an opponent, as well as the likelihood of dodging an attack. Likelihood that you will strike is your attack, or 81. Defense, likelihood that you will dodge, 14. Vitality determines the amount of life available as well as the amount of stamina. Amount stamina, amount of life available, magic. Magic decrease, determines the amount of magic points available and increases the damage dealt by spells. Mana available. We have skills. Sword and club skill increases attack and radiant damage to the sword, and it will do this for all of the melee weapons you can wield, including stabs. And then you get into bone crossbow skill, and then finally, critical strike skill. Increases the chance of critical strike from, you know, 0 to 1%. Spellcasting skill. Decreases your spellcasting speed. Dual wielding skill. And such and so forth. And then these 
um, battle skills. Attack magic skill, and all that. We'll get more than that later. Your pet also had the same stats, except it doesn't have any special stats over here. But we'll get more into that later. We also have quests. Now I'm in one quest right now. In the journal. How long we've been playing, our steps taken, goal gathered, quest completed, deepest death, death. Monster defeated, boss defeated, spells cast, chests open, traps sprung, barrels broken, potions used, portals used, fish caught, and times gathered. And then we can just auto toggle the map. Auto toggle that. Welcome to the Temple of Faith. Before I let you per face your destiny, perhaps you must prove yourself. Perhaps some of the realm guardians can help you. Now, in this world, you can choose either the ice world with Cyrus or the land of Durantia. You will inevitably, if, to beat this game and retire and fix all the crap that you just pulled off, you're going to have to beat both of them. We're going to start off with this one, Durantia first. Our realm has been plagued by the forces of Lez River. Only legendary swords or heroes such as yourself can stop them. Be somewhere on the 27th level of dungeon and I'll push to Give the superior students like cap of the lords of the lord. The realm guardian has given you a heroic quest. Look for the portal on the edge of the temple of fate in the gar guardian's realm. You must complete all heroic quests before you can retire. Zero keys to look around corners to get a better view of your surroundings. Items and hotkey slots at the bottom of the screen may be used by pressing the corresponding number. Now we are in Durantia. <laughs> You've seen my cousin Gantz? He looks just like me, except shorter. Anyway, would you like that? Would you like to see what I have for sale? This is a shopping interface. Drag items from left to right to buy them. Drag from right to left to sell. You may also quickly buy or sell items by holding shift while clicking on them. Never your pets sell directly to merchants by holding shift when you click on them. So yeah, we have potions and all that. This is a average store. This will sell basically everything that's kind of in the middle of the road. But what you want to do, before you do anything, is buy this fishing pole. And I'm going to show you in a second why. Gambling is only for the foolish of the bird. Or depending on how your dice roll, care to try your luck. Gambling in the face. The items on the left have all known magical powers. Watch your first one. Its powers will be instantly revealed. Now, gambling is a very awesome thing because you can buy something for a thousand and end up having to sell it for like fifty thousand. There's just one problem with this though. One does it? Co it costs way more to buy some of these items than it would be in the normal average shop, as you can tell. We couldn't buy anything in here, but we could buy stuff in the average shop. We're gonna fix that. Bricks of bricks. We're gonna fix that because I have a bit of a method you can use. Uh -huh. Madam Yaga. Do you want to know your fortune? Or it all lies in these cards of fate, and I can help you. Throughout the dungeon, numerous fate cards can be found. Bring them here and trade three of them at a time for a wonderful reward. This is also kind of like gambling, but there's different ways you can get different rewards by matching up certain fate cards. Just a glance, I can extract gems from items and destroy what's left of the item. Well, the gems will be left free for reuse, however. Interesting. Do not do this. This guy's a ripoff. Unless you really want those things. Welcome, I want you to view my wondrous, mysterious vase. I won't bite too hard. <laughs> this is the magic shop. This is Durantia's magic shop, anyway. As you can see, things are kind of super expensive, but they're mainly magic oriented. Summon rat and all that. We'll get more into that later. And then over here, you have the middle of the road armor shop. <laughs> Buy my adrusely detailed weaponry. No one else around here will. Buy it now. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sometimes I can be overbearing. <laughs> Sheesh. I don't really buy something. This is sort of the middle of the road. Just armor and weapons. 
This guy will increase his stuff depending on the level you are. All of them will. But the more middle of the road guys will, of course, uh, be more. Sp they'll they'll be better than just the gambling unless you have a lot of money. <laughs> a garden spirit is under siege and has taken no refuge in the shrine of the dragon fighter, the bloodthirsty, on the first level. Activate the shrine and defend it from the monsters. What recharges? You have received a quest. Now, what you want to do, because these little yellow things, that means that someone needs a quest from you. Or needs you to do something for them. When you first start, whether it's a smear scratch or you fall down on the brink, I can set you right if you allow me to heal you. This lady won't heal you no matter what. Unless it's a guy. I can't really tell. Fun dum dumbus. Um. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that to get the most. Good day to you. There's a networker who's been stealing my chickens. Please help me defeat. Do away with Tark Nerve and my farm stock will be safe again. I heard that he was on level one. You have received the task. Ah. You do not want to do any quest that is above your current level. In other words, since we are, haven't even started level one yet, we have two level one quests. So something that happens in this game a lot is every time you go up a floor, you cannot go down a floor and accept, accept a quest for that same level. Which means you will do a very small amount of quests if you just accept everything that's like two or three levels above the level that you're on. So. Okay. You have received a I'll test. That now... Because of that, just every time you do a level, just go up one level. Well, no. Beat the, the quests that are on one level that you are currently on. And then after you've made sure that you've beaten that level and you've cleared it, before going up to the next level, go back to town and ask around and see if there is stuff for the next level before you go up. Just think I'll get what more I can that do later. for your reputation. I've lived 4,000 years, and yet I don't feel a day over 900. I've seen, and lo, I've seen heroes come and go. Boy, you are about, you are, and boy, you are something to sing about. Am I right or am I right? Yeah, that's the next fame level. When you pay 5,000 gold to rank, advance the rank of tolerated. No. A fine day. Bongo. Excuse me, anything? I've got some fish here for sale if you want. Fish. Get more into this when we actually get some fish. And the reason why is there's so much friggin' fish. Like, so much. Another don't let my pie die. I wonder. I can extract gems from weapons safely, but I keep the gems. <laughs> Rip off. Fishing. Incredibly important. There is a luck stat in this game, and you can get. This is the Mentor Screen Dragon. Okay. Drag weapons and armor onto the top slots to equip them. Drop items by dragging them into the view on the left. Use items by right clicking them. To use potions or fish on your pet, drag them to the pet's icon on the top left of the screen and hold shift while right clicking on them. Spitter in it. You found an unidentified item! This means that the ma I item has undiscovered magical powers. Identify it by right clicking on an identify scroll and left clicking on an item. So I did not expect to immediately get a rare item. So every level that you do in the dungeon, or you can get items from this fishing spot, depends on the rarity of the item that you get. Orange is the rarest item there type there is. It is also the most expensive. As you can see, there is some stuff here. If you equip that, because it says 20% or 5% chance of finding magical items, which means that it increased Starlux stat. I don't know how we managed to get a rare item right off the bat, but this is how you get a lot of money in this game without having to do a lot of quests to get it, or risking yourself from getting, like, killed. Because getting killed in this game sucks. It really does. You have to pay death off half your gold, or you can have your gold just thrown in some random part of the dungeon and you have to go back to get it. Okay, another one. Um, so you have to pay death off or have your gold in some random part of the dungeon that you have to go get or die. And then... 
the other options are have your fate de get decreased one level or something like that. And then you have also your experience takes a hit. It's just bad. You can also have it to where you, like, you wake up one floor below or whatever. There's a lot of different options <coughs> when you die to like try to save it. But you can uh, get royally screwed up from dying. So make sure that you have the money. Nope. Missed one. And fishing is a good way to do that. Now, actual fish. Whenever you fish, you have a chance of getting a rare item. Like this. Or a fish, which fishes vary by rarity. And they increase your pet stats. Now, Bee Samurai. Strength improved by 28. Um, dexterity improved by 5. Vitality improved by 20. And armor improved by 7. Now, there are some fish that will decrease your pet stats. But you will gain a specific stat. As you can see, Snow Stalker right here has better attributes. Keep in mind that your pet will go for any type of enemy in the game, which means that they can also tell transform into ones that are significantly weaker than you normally would have liked to be. This being said, um, they also get really sm really bad movement speed, and you really don't want the movement speed uh, slows. Um, what you really want, though, there was one particular fish that I would really, really like to get lucky enough to get, because I'm going to fish a couple more times and I'm going to stop, because it will close in on the end of the episode here. Um, and that is a stinger fish. A stinger fish will turn your um, animal into the strongest enemy in the game that you can have your animal at, which is a scorp feline. And it, those things are insane. They're by far the strongest one, and you can have a permanent fish of that attribute. They're just extremely rare because it's like one of the best things in the game. And you could also fish until you can get enough money from selling all these fish as well. Let's see. You also want a lot of fish because your pet as it stands right now is super weak. And what you want is... See, the dexterity and reduced and vitality reduced there. That's not good. Also, crystalline cutters and volatex snails are some of the slowest enemies in the game. Just so you're aware. I will be, for the sake of completion and showing every single one of them off in their attributes and uh, strategies for use, I will be showing you what each one of these fishes look like. But for now, we're just, uh, gonna fish one more time here. And then we can enchant this stuff, and you can see just how much gold we got. Oops, I accidentally canceled that. Stop fishing will sometimes let you have the fish, but stop set hook will actually let you have the fish more often than that. If the, uh, uh, bite thing shows up. Which is the exclamation point. You can also save your yellow items. I would suggest that if you have if you have a specific class that you want to go for, um, definitely keep that that item. But I would suggest to make the most out of the efficiency of the game to have a item set that for when you're fishing and an armor set for when you're um, actually going to fight. Because otherwise, you're just going to have tons of stuff in your thing, and that's not good. There are chests that you can use to store your items, which I will get into in just a second. Um, so you can see the monster. It's your why not your pet snail. Been transformed. That has been transformed into a volatile snail. And now your pet has the resistance and the weakness of any fish type it has. Now he has a piercing resistance, but a crushing weakness from being a snail. Okay, now, so what we do, we buy a book of. You're not the one I have to buy from. Never mind. Necron. <laughs> okay. I don't want to sell that because, um. 
I'm sure I'll get rid of the Beast Samurai. Small grouper. As you can see, as well, items that are not identified will sell for nothing. It's kind of ridiculous. They will, they'll just... They'll just be sitting there with 300 price, and they're really quite expensive. You sell all these. You have enough money to buy a book of identify. This is something very important that you want to buy, because this thing is a really awesome. And now we have 18k. And look at all those stats. So now, we can sell that. Mm. And we've already made 19,000 without even having to go down into the bottom of the dungeon. So you can see how great this strategy is, right? I'm just gonna buy this real quick. You always wanna make sure that you have at least one set of books for each type. Identify and town portals. Now that we have some money, this is the gambling thing. Let's buy a belt. Actually, let's buy it in a ring. Defense magic skill bonus and a socket. Sockets are gem or sockets are for gems that give you bonuses. They can be gems can be really friggin' awesome. Specifically, zirconium, which is, increases your um, chance of finding magical items. Let's buy a goblin ring. Vitality bonus. And let's buy the other cheap thing, a ruby ring. 8% chance of, or 8% damage taken reduced. Hmm. Now let's buy some armor. Jawamas Jeweled Leather Vest of Seasons. And honestly, buying stuff from this guy, well actually let's buy this as well, let's see what this is. Ah. Forceful Leather Vest of Obtuseness. No, oh, thank you. This is where you can get the bad gambling aspect. It can either be really good or really bad, but a lot of the times it's it can be good. As you can see, we haven't even gone anywhere yet, and we're already pretty set up to go. But we're at the end of this episode. So the next episode of Fate Undiscovered Realms will be continuing on. See you guys then.